Hi, everyone. Welcome to week five of Advanced Condometrics. This week, we're talking about maximum likelihood estimation. So just as a reminder, last time we talked about the low drip model. Uh, this week, we're talking about maximum likelihood. A few topics here. We're going to just go through an overview, talk about the maximum likelihood estimator itself, work through some uh, examples of, of applying maximum likelihood, then talk about some properties of the maximum likelihood estimator, uh, talk about the, the variance estimator for maximum likelihood, talk about model fit and tests, and then finally we're going to talk about the idea of numerical optimization, which we'll use in uh, solving for the maximum likelihood estimator. Uh, and then we've got some uh, examples that we'll talk about in class uh, itself. The reading this week, I, I have a kind of uh, about eight pages or so, maybe 10 pages of notes on maximum likelihood for you to look at. Uh, and then also chapter eight in the train textbook. That, that's the bit on uh, numerical optimization. So each one of those topics will be its own video. Some of them will be short, uh, so hopefully it won't be, uh, it seems like a lot of videos, but it won't be a lot. So just quick recap and looking ahead. We've spent the last two weeks looking at discrete choice models and just kind of the general discrete choice framework. We talked about the random utility model and how we can use that to get from a discrete choice problem to, towards an econometric model. And then finally, last week, we talked about the logit model, the first of these uh, econometric models that we can use to solve a, a multinomial discrete choice or, or binary discrete choice problem. Um, we solved those models using R, some of the kind of canned routines in R, but we still don't really know how to solve them, how to estimate those models ourselves. And that's what we're going to start working on this week. Uh, we're going to solve the logit model using maximum likelihood estimation and using numerical optimization to find the maximum likelihood estimator. So this week, we're going to talk about those two topics, maximum likelihood estimation and the numerical, uh, uh, numerical optimization. And then next week, we're going to actually apply those to the logit model, actually do look under the hood of what's going on with like the M logit function in R and estimate one of these models ourselves. And so that's why we're taking this maybe seemingly slight diversion into maximum likelihood when we had been talking about logit. So real, real high level overview, uh, maximum likelihood estimation is one of the most common estimation methods and kind of models, modern structural econometrics. And one reason for this is that maximum likelihood is more flexible than other methods like, like OLS, for example. Uh, and in particular, maximum likelihood can accommodate nonlinear models. It can also accommodate linear models. In fact, OLS is a special case of maximum likelihood. So maximum likelihood is just kind of this broader, more flexible approach to estimation than something like OLS. Uh, there are always trade-offs though, that flexibility uh, comes because we are required to make some stronger distributional assumptions than we have to make in OLS. Uh, when those assumptions hold, uh, we get some really nice properties. The maximum likelihood estimator is consistent and efficient, which are two things we generally want from our estimators. Uh, but if these assumptions are invalid, then the interpretation of our maximum likelihood estimator is a little less clear. And we'll talk about these assumptions throughout this, this whole set of videos. And so uh, the basic idea here is that you, you make some distributional assumptions about the data generating process that you observe, or at least that you observe the data that were generated by this process. You make some assumptions about what the distribution of that process is. And then the maximum likelihood estimators are the parameters that make it most likely for you to have generated the data that you do actually observe. We'll talk through the intuition of that over the next couple slides here. So let's just start with a simple example. Suppose we have five random draws from a normal dis distribution, but we don't know which normal distribution. By that I mean we don't know, so, so uh, let's take a step back. The normal distribution is defined by two parameters, the mean, which is usually denoted by mu, and the variance, which is usually denoted by sigma squared. So we know our data came from a normal, but we don't know the mu or the sigma squared of that normal. And so, for example, let's say those five draws are 48.7, 50.9, 48.8, 50.6, and 48.8. These five numbers here on the screen. Now let's consider two possible distributions, either a normal, standard normal, mean zero, variance one, or 
a normal distribution mean 50 variants of one, okay? Two different distributions, both normal, but just centered at different places. And now let's think through kind of this thought experiment. What's the likelihood of having generated that particular vector of random draws, 48.7, so on, from a standard normal centered at zero? What's the likelihood that we could have drawn these five numbers up here in the 40s and 50s from a standard normal? It's gonna be practically zero. Just like the likelihood of that happening is infinitesimally small, basically. But what's the likelihood of having generated these five random draws from a normal distribution with a mean of 50? Much greater. It's going to be much more likely that you're drawing 48s and 51s from a, a, a normal distribution centered at 50 than making those same draws from a normal distribution centered at zero. So given our data, we would say in this case that mu equals to 50 has a greater likelihood than mu equals to zero. There's some true underlying distribution that these data came from that we don't know, but we would say it seems much more likely to us that that mean would have been 50 than that that mean would have been zero. And that's basically the idea behind maximum likelihood estimation. It's going to be a little more, we're, we're, we're going to make it a little more formal. We're going to be a little more, uh, you know, allow for, for all possible numbers and not just two. But, but the basic idea is you observe some data, you make some assumptions about the distribution that generated that data, and then you find the parameters that maximize the likelihood of having generated the data that you actually observe. I think we need to step back for just a second and remind ourselves of, of one concept in particular, which is the probability density function. The probability density function is normally denoted by f, f of y conditional on theta. We're saying that y is going to be this random variable. Its distribution is defined by f and, or its density function is defined as f. And there are going to be these, theta is going to be this vector of parameters that kind of describe the shape of that density. And the probability density function is giving us the relative likelihood that a random variable would take a particular value. So I, I, I'm hoping you've seen this before in, in, in earlier stats classes, but the basic idea here is it's defining how likely it is that a random variable has any particular, ends up being any particular draw. So just as an example, uh, the probability density function of the normal distribution. I've shown here the, the mathematical expression for it. So we're saying y is going to be our random variable. Its density function is conditional on the mean and the variance, mu and sigma squared, and, and we have this nice expression, mathematical expression for it. I've also plotted just graphically what this looks like for the standard normal in case, in case a, a refresher is helpful there. But this is telling us conditional on some set of parameters, how likely is it that we would get a particular random draw? Okay, conditional on a set of parameters, how likely is it that we would get a particular random draw? But what if the opposite's true? What if we actually already know the result of that draw, we already know the data, but we don't know what those underlying parameters are, the mu and the sigma squared on that last slide. That's the case that we're normally in as econometricians. We see some data and we want to make some inference about the parameters that, that generated that data or that describe the relationships we observe in the data. And so we can use that exact same mathematical expression but just kind of flip our, our, our conception of it. And instead of giving us the, the, the likelihood of random draws conditional on data, we can think of it as telling us the likelihood that, sorry, instead of thinking of it as the, the likelihood of data conditional on parameters, we can think of it as telling us the likelihood that some parameters generated those data that we, that we actually observe. And so we call this thing the likelihood function and we denote it by a capital L and we switch the conditioning. We're gonna say capital L is a function of parameters and conditioned on data as opposed to the opposite, which is what we saw on the last slide. 
but the actual underlying mathematical expression is exactly the same. So here I've, I've, I've once again uh, put the, the mathematical expression for the likelihood function for a single known random draw from the normal distribution. What you can see here is the right hand side is exactly the same as the right hand side on the previous slide. It's just that now we're thinking, uh, uh, let me say this, on the previous slide, we were thinking that mu and sigma squared were known, and this expression was telling us something about the likelihood of, of drawing a y. Now we're thinking that y is known, and this expression is telling us something about the likelihood of having a mu or a sigma squared that generated that data. Mathematically, it's the same thing. It's just conceptually, we're kind of flipping what we think of as being known and what we think of as being unknown. That's the basic idea behind maximum likelihood estimation. We're going to dig in a little deeper in the next video and actually define the maximum likelihood estimator itself.